जय हिंद वेलकम टू क्लास ऑफ एनालॉग एंड डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ यूनिट फोर व्हिच इज डिजिटल मॉड्यूलेशन सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विथ व्हाट डिजिटल मॉड्यूलेशन इज वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज कम्युनिकेशन दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव बीन स्टडिंग फ्रॉम पास्ट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स सो द मेन पर्पज ऑफ अ कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम इज टू ट्रांसफर इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम अ सोर्स टू अ रिसीवर that happens through a channel or medium right if i want to show the basic block diagram of any communication system my very basic blocks of a communication system includes the information source i may call it source or information source followed by transmitter followed by channel then finally it goes to receiver and to end destination which is my intended recipient most of the noise gets added up in the channel so we can show it here as well these are the five basic blocks of any communication system <coughs> what a source will do an information will generate information source will generate the information that could be in the form of voice data video music email right or that could be any picture right these are the different types of communication systems that we may study which includes my pstn public switch telephone network satellite systems radio tv broadcasting cellular phones computer networks right so these are the types of information that my information source generates now my source this could be either analog or digital in nature that is it depends on what kind of message it generates whether it generates analog signal or it generates digital signal right based on which i can even classify my communication system so if i actually want to if i if i go back and see the basic classification of my communication system on the basis of message signal i can classify my communication system as analog communication system and digital communication system if the signal that we are transmitting is analog in nature that kind of communication system is called as analog communication system if the signal that we are transmitting is digital in nature that kind of system is called digital communication system likewise if we classify it on the basis of um, the frequency then we can classify it as passband and baseband <coughs> baseband communication is communicating at low frequency without doing any alteration or modulation whereas passband and ba ba uh, uh, band pass are uh, used interchangeably this means when we do modulation and then communicate that kind of modulation is called as a uh, uh, pass band or band pass communication now another criteria for classification is if we classify it on the basis of type of communication equipments then we have simplex half duplex and full duplex depending on if it is capable of transmitting only or receiving only then uh, we may call it simplex if it is capable of transmitting and reception both then uh, duplex depending on if it is doing transmission at a time and reception another time half duplex and if it is capable of doing both simultaneously then full duplex right so on the basis of uh, types of message signal i may classify it as analog and digital right the next block is my transmitter what is the job of a transmitter the job of a transmitter is to check for the characteristics of the input signal it matches the characteristics of the input signal with the available channel and if both are compatible it processes the information as it is if not then it does all the necessary alterations into my message signal so that my signal is enabled in a form that it propagates via the available channel so my transmitter would include one of the major block most important block which is called as modulator it would include a transducer that will convert one form of energy into another that would be an electrical transducer my amplifier will amplify the signal in modulation 
as we all know, we alter the high frequency, uh, the characteristics of the high frequency carrier wave with respect to the instantaneous value of the message signal. Then we do modulation. My oscillator will be helpful in generating some waves and power amplifier will be used for amplification, amplification again. And it does include antenna if we are using wireless mode of communication. Okay. This is the second block. Coming to the next block which is my channel, my channel could be classified as wireless and wired. If I talk about wired channels, then I do have cable that could be coaxial cable, twisted pair cable, copper cables, right? And optical fiber cable. And if I talk about free space communication, then again I may classify it on the basis of frequencies it uses for communication that could be classified as ground wave, sky wave and space wave. Details could be studied separately. Now, the next, <coughs> as we know that most of the noise gets incorporated within the channel part. So, I may show noise here. Right? Noise has its type like external and internal noise. This can also be studied separately. Next block is receiver. My receiver will do or we can say it will undo all the processes that has occurred at transmitter. Like if at transmitter modulation has occurred, at receiver it will do demodulation. If multiplexing has occurred at transmitter, it will do demultiplexing. Right? It will of course have a receiving antenna if we are talking about wireless communication. It will have oscillator. The need of oscillator will be <coughs> at several stages like demodulation. We might need an oscillator for uh, detection of the signal. Amplification power amplifiers are required of course to enhance the, the quality of the signal, the power of the signal. And transducer will again convert those electrical signal into the human understandable form. Like if it was an audio signal that got communicated in the form of electrical pulses, it has to be converted back into audio signal. And finally, the end destination or the recipient that would be the person itself. This could be through some monitor screen or loudspeaker, etc. This we discussed type of information and these are certain examples of communication systems that we use in daily life. How can we represent our information? It converts information into electrical or uh, electromagnetic optical signals which is appropriate for transmission through. Analog systems convert analog messages into signals that can propagate through the channel which is true. Now what about digital signals? Digital systems will convert my bits, 1, 0 bits, which are also called as digits or symbols into signals. Computer naturally generate information as characters or bits. Most information can be converted into bits, that is analog signals <coughs> converted to bits through the process which is called as sampling, quantization and encoding, which we will discuss in detail in further lectures, right. Although this has been covered in the previous lecture as well when we have spoken about sampling, quantization and encoding uh, for conversion of uh, PAM, PW and PPM signals also uh, during the studies of PCM and delta modulation. So what we mean from this slide is although most of the signals available in nature are analog in form, there is a need for conversion of those analog signal into digital form. And when we convert them into digital form, the signal is represented as bits. The question is, the big question is why do we have to go for digital communication when there is already existing analog form of communication, well established, the classical form of communication. One of the foremost reason is my digital signal has better noise immunity. How? Let us take example of an analog signal which I represent like which is a continuous function of time. On x axis I have time and y axis I have the voltage value. Right. What is noise? No <coughs> noise is a random fluctuation available in the background. So noise of any frequency or any voltage level. Although if noise available in the background is lying close to the frequency of the message signal, it will of course, of course cause some distortion in the available signal and my noisy signal will somehow look like this. Right. 
there will be random fluctuations in the voltage of the available signal. Whereas, in case of digital communication, my message is represented in binary form that is in the form of bits and which when communicated via a wired channel, these are represented in the form of voltage pulses of particular voltage level. I may represent bit 1 with particular voltage value which could be plus 5 volt or plus 2 volt or I may use a line coding scheme where 0 is represented by 0 volt and 1 is represented by plus 5 volt. In such case, my noise has to be strong enough to make 5 volt as 0 volt, then only 1 will be misread as 0. So, in case of digital communication, my noise has to be strong enough to convert 1 into 0 or 0 into 1. Whereas, in analog communication, uh, this is a continuous function of time and amplitude and distortions are easier by, by noise to make. So, this is the first reason we go with a better immunity to noise, digital communication. If I talk about lesser memory requirement, if I talk about memory requirement, <coughs> yes of course, in case of analog communication, we can see this uh, continuous wave. It is continuous in time and amplitude, right. So, if I want to save this data, I will have infinite set of values, is not it? For every instant of time, I do have some voltage value and if I want to store this, I will have infinite set of values and storing these infinite set of values would require huge amount of memory. Whereas in case of digital communication, this one cycle could be represented into finite set of 1 and zeros that can be stored easily. So, lesser memory requirement is one, one of the major reasons why, uh, why we switch from analog to digital communication. Third thing is good processing techniques are available for digital signals, yes. Uh, I am a big fan of this. With digital communication, we can implement various encryption techniques, various data compression techniques, right. Uh, various security security features can be added and most of the coding schemes are available for binary bits of data. Hence, it is better to have my data in digital format rather than having it in analog form. These three are the major reasons why we need to switch from analog to digital communication although there are plenty of reasons we can add on to this. Basic digital communication transformations, <clears throat> if I talk about the basic digital communication transformations, the first thing that we need to talk is formatting or source coding. What is source coding? Source coding techniques include data compression techniques, which is one of the prime feature of any digital communication, right. It transforms source information into digital symbols, which is called as digitization. It selects compatible waveforms, that is matching function, and it introduces redundancy, which facilitates accurate decoding despite errors. Introducing redundancy is for error control. I am going to talk about these in detail, right? Accurate decoding, error control, source coding for compression, channel coding for error control. These two are the prominent features of any digital communication. If we are using source coding and channel coding, then of course we are using digital communication. <clears throat> what are the essentials for a reliable communication? modulation and demodulation true. The modulation is the process of modifying the signal to facilitate transmission true. We have discussed in detail about modulation in our unit 1 and 2 as well, where we have uh, discussed about analog modulation and its various forms like amplitude modulation, frequency and phase modulation, right. It is simply the process of altering the characteristics of a high frequency carrier wave with respect to the instantaneous value of a message signal that that technique is called as modulation. 
My demodulation reverses the process of modulation. It involves the detection and retrieval of the information signal, right? The types include coherent and non-coherent. Demodulation or detection occurs at <coughs> receiver. If I if if I possess a demodulator, it could be non-coherent in nature or coherent in nature. <coughs> a coherent demodulator will have a local oscillator which will be generating the carrier wave locally. What carrier wave? The carrier wave which is coherent in phase and frequency to the carrier which was earlier used at the transmitter. Such kind of demodulators are called as coherent demodulators. In non -co <coughs> here my receiver must have uh, the prior knowledge of the carrier. In case of my non-coherent detection, it does not require reference phase information, right? It, it does not require the knowledge of the local oscillator. <coughs> Apart from that, uh, like source coding, uh, source coding, modulation, what else? Coding and decoding. Coding and decoding means translating information bits to transmitter data symbols True. These are the techniques which are used to enhance information signals. So they, they are they are less vulnerable to channel impairments. <coughs> this we do for channel coding in case of channel coding. Source coding is for data compression for increasing the efficiency. Channel coding is done to increase the accuracy of the system, to increase the reliability of the system. And we must take care of a thing that reliability and efficiency, these two must have a trade-off. How and why? Let's talk about it. If I want a faster communication, like in case of live telecast, you might have observed that uh, the picture quality is not that good. How does that happen? Like we in that case, uh, the motive is to transmit my data fast. So what we do, we remove redundant bits. That could be maybe every eight bit we remove. So removing the redundant bits from the information will somehow make me compromise on 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 the quality of the picture, but it will be faster. Now let's talk about another application like military communication, where I cannot compromise with the quality of the message. There I need to do padding I use extra bits so those extra bits will help me uh, in uh, error control right if some uh, distortion has occurred if some error has occurred that will help me detect that error and correct that error that comes under error control and this whole thing comes under channel coding so compression for channel F for for communication efficiency includes source coding and adding redundancy uh, includes channel coding, right? It involves adding redundant bits. Multiplexing, multiple access, these are used in digital communication. <coughs> this is the block diagram of my digital communication system. If I have information source that might go as bits, right? The source coding is the block as I just discussed does compression prime example for source coding is Shannon Fano coding and Huffman coding which we will be studying in detail in future encryption or channel encoding these two blocks are to provide reliability to my communication system here in both the kind of communication will go with padding of data here we add redundancy right so one thing we have to take care of in source coding we remove redundancy in channel coding we add redundancy these two things are contradictory to each other so we have to be application specific for what purpose we are communicating if we are communicating for faster communication then we have to rely more on then we have to use more of source coding if we talk about a more reliable kind of system rather than having an efficient kind of system then we uh, must concentrate on channel coding schemes right 
my multiplexer would combine two or more number of information signal and propagate them via single channel. So this is the job of my multiplexer. Here any kind of modulator we may use. We are, I have shown it with the help of a pulse modulator or a bandpass modulator. Okay. The next step would be frequency spreading. This is one of the very um, popular thing in uh, military communication, frequency hopping. After that, multiple axis. What is multiple axis? Multiple axis and multiplexing are all together similar. Somewhat, uh, when we combine different input information and propagate them via same channel, we call it multiplexing. And when these information signals or transmitters are geographically separated, then we use the term multiple axis. Right? I hope I made that point clear. Then it is then transmitted. It travels via long channel and it reaches the receiver. At receiver, what has occurred here will be undone. So multiple axis, here first of all we'll segregate the data. Then uh, as spreading was the last, uh, second last step, we do despreading, frequency despreading. Then as modulation has occurred, so here we'll go with demodulation and detection. That depends on what kind of modulation scheme was used there, similar kind of demodulation scheme. Like if uh, amplitude modulation was used, we'll, uh, we'll use a coherent, we'll use an envelope detector here and we'll use a super heterodyne receiver here likewise if it was dsbsa double sideband suppressed carrier then we go with <coughs> costas receiver if we are using amplitude shift keying frequency shift keying or phase shift keying accordingly we'll use the demodulators then as multiplexing has occurred here the next step would be demultiplexing it will segregate different informations and then again pass it to different users then as channel encoding was used, decoding will be done here and as encryption occurred at transmitter, decryption will undo the process, it will decode. Encryption technique is basically done to prevent my data from a third party. It will make the data unreadable when it is on air. So various encryption the techniques like cryptography is a separate field if you want to pursue. Here we can have different cyclic codes, block codes which are used for encryption techniques. There are different algorithms which my actual uh, message undergoes, right? That could be block ciphers, stream ciphers. We use some secret key. At times we may use pair of keys. So a whole lot of mathematics is involved. This is basically done to prevent my data from hacking or, uh, or um, uh, saving it from third party access, right? Then as source encoding has occurred here, compression, we can decompress using source decoder. And finally, the message is converted into the original form format and it goes to the recipient or the receiver who, uh, which is intended to receive the signal. As I'm talking about digital communication, so I am assuming that my data is not analog in form, it is binary bits, it is in the form of binary bits. So here synchronization is very important thing, my transmitter and receiver must be synchronized well enough so that uh, every bit is received uh, and because multiplexing is involved here. So at the time of segregation, the messages has to be segregated properly. Synchronization is one of the prime uh, important thing in case of my digital communication, right? Digital pass band waveform, digital base band waveform, wherever required, right? So this is the whole block diagram of a communication system. And we may further elaborate it and go in details in the upcoming lectures. That's it for today. These are the references I have used. Thank you.